Hello everyone, this is Matteo and today we are going to talk again about IP adapter. Yes, because I just pushed a huge update and a lot has changed. So it's time to go through the new features. First, the bad news. The new IP adapter is not compatible with previous workflows. So unfortunately, you have to rebuild them with the new nodes. Sorry about that, but it cannot be helped. Okay, now the good news. I know how painful it is to select all models uh, needed by IP adapter, so I made a unified loader that takes care of everything. It needs to know what checkpoint you are using, so I'm connecting it to uh, the model pipeline. And all you need to do is select the kind of IP adapter that you want. For this demo, I'm using plus. Now I can connect to the main IP adapter node, lower the weight a little, connect the model and then the case sampler. Finally, we get to choose a reference image. And that's it, we can generate. I don't think it can get any easier than that. Now the problem with automated system is that they tend to load uh, more than it is needed. To avoid that, I made it so you can daisy chain the unified loader. If I need a different IP adapter in my workflow, I can take a new loader, select the new model, let's say standard, and connect to the previous IP adapter pipeline. This way all models that are shared between the two are not loaded twice. For the model pipeline, I'm connecting directly from the checkpoint because I want two isolated distinct generations. At this point, I need a new IP adapter node, connect it to the loader and to the reference image. Now I can duplicate the case sampler, connect the model and make a new generation. Now, let's say that I want to try an SDXL model. All I have to do is to pick the new checkpoint and change the latent size. That's it. I can generate again and all the models will be updated automatically. Well, I hope you'll appreciate the simplicity. Now, you probably noticed that there's no Face ID models in the dropdown. Uh, for those, we need a dedicated loader. This one also loads the LoRa and Insight Face if needed. Remember that the provider should be CPU, even if you have a powerful GPU. Uh, that is because it will save some VRAM. So now I can swap the pipelines and select a Face ID model. Let me delete the second generation. And for the reference, I'm using this picture. Boom, done. To improve the likeliness, I can add a second IP adapter face model. So I'm adding a unified loader, select plus face, and this time I'm connecting it uh, directly to the previous IP adapter. So we are adding the effect of the two. I connect the IP adapter pipeline, I need another IP adapter node. The weight of this one should be lowered, let's try with 0.5 and finally to the case sampler. For the reference image, the plus model needs a face cropped very close, so I'm using this one to get better results. Let's see. Okay, this was unexpected, uh, but I guess she's wearing a female full plate armor. Anyway, for simple workflows, if you don't need uh, complications, this is all you need to know. But of course, we want complications, so let's go deeper into the rabbit hole. There's another node called IP Adapter Advanced, that is where the magic happens. You can connect this to the unified loader if you want, and in that case, the clip vision input is optional or you can use the legacy loaders like a pro. In this case, of course, you need to select the proper models by yourself. I'm using a plus model and the VITH clip vision. Now I connect the model pipelines and I need a reference image. To get better results, I can also prep the image with prep image for clip vision and I also add a little sharpening. Now the results should be a tad better. Okay, cool. Now let's see what this weight type is about. I'm lowering the weight a bit and add to the prompt cherry blossoms. 
I can generate now and as you can see very little has changed. That is because the plus model is very strong and even if I lower the strength, the cherry blossoms won't show up. Now let's try to set the weight back to 1 and the weight type to reverse in out. And here comes the cherry blossom. The image is now slightly underdeveloped, so we can also set a high CFG and try again. Isn't she pretty? There are many options for the weight type and I encourage you to test them all. What it does is to change the way the IP adapter model is applied to the unit. With EZIN, for example, the IP adapter will have a stronger value in the input blocks and then will slowly fade away in the output blocks. Ok, next, noise injection. You probably noticed that there's no noise option anymore. That's because now we have a dedicated noise generation node that can generate various kind of noise. If I connect a preview to it, it will show you what it does. If you also connect the optional image, it will be added to the noise. And if you want to simulate the previous noise implementation, you need to connect the reference image and select shuffle. Now I connect this to the image negative input and check the result. Very nice. The cool thing about this is that you can send anything as negative image. Let me add a load image and pick some noise I pre-generated, like this, or this one, or actually any image. For example, if I want a less illustration result, I can pick this comic book picture and the result will be more realistic. Or I can try with this manga and the possibilities are really endless. Ok, now let's try to send two images together. For that I need an image batch. I duplicate the load image and prep node, select this anime, connect everything together and now the result is a mix of the two reference uh, pictures. Since I have multiple images now I can use the combine embeds options. By default, the embeds are sent one after the other, but we can also average them or normalize them. Ok, this is cool, but I bet that you want more control over the two references. And probably you want to give one more weight than the other. This is done with another set of nodes. So first we get rid of the IP adapter node and use instead IP adapter embeds. This one expects already encoded embeddings and not images, so we need to encode the images first. I don't need the batch node. Ok, now I need an IP adapter encoder for each image and I connect the model and the images to them. Remember that this also works with the unified loader, in which case you don't need to connect the clip vision because it is taken directly from the IP adapter pipeline. But I am a big boy so I'm using the advanced nodes. Now I can merge the positive embeds with a combined embeds node, set the method to average and send them to the IP adapter. You don't need to connect the negative embed, but since it saves a little compute power, I'm connecting any of the two negative embeds to the IP adapter. Ok, now I need to lower the weight and see what happens. Let's say that I want more sci-fi and less fantasy. I can set the weight of the first image to 0.6 and the result will be closer to the second reference. And you can also try with other methods. Normalized average is often nice, for example. Min, max and subtract are there mostly for fun and won't help you much, I guess, but you can try. Ok, if I also want to send some noise to the generation, I can add an IP adapter noise node, set it to shuffle, connect one of the reference images and set the strength to like 0.4. Now I copy the IP adapter encoder and 
I know this is counterintuitive, but I connect the positive embed of this node to the negative embed of the IP adapter. That is because we are using the positive embedding, which is actually just noise, as negative conditioning. OK, we are done. I can generate. Nice. One last feature. You probably noticed that the encoder has a mask input. This is not an attention mask, but a clip vision mask. It is used to hide some details from the clip vision encoder. Let me show you. I'm using a picture of Peggy Carter in the first reference and Cap America in the second. In the description, I write something like close up cinematic shot of a superhero woman in 1950 and generate. OK, this is fine, but she looks a little bit too much like Chris Evans. So I open the mask editor, cover the face, invert the mask because I want everything but the face and add a little blur. Now I can connect it to the image encoder. OK, let's see the result. And now she is a little more feminine. Just to make it more obvious, let me grab this other picture of a skull. I'm also lowering Peggy's weight to 0.6 and if I generate now I get this monstrosity. Let's say that for some reason I like this composition but I don't want the side gems. In the mask editor I can simply cover the four side gems and generate again. And now we get this beauty. It's important to remember to set the combine method to average or add because concat, which is the default, wouldn't probably work. Yeah, in fact, it is not working very well. OK, next we need to cover the batch nodes. Almost all new IP adapter nodes have a batch counterpart. These nodes, instead of merging the embeds to generate one image, they keep them separate and apply them one at a time in the latent batch. Let me show you. I need two images, in the first I put this picture and in the second this one from Cyberpunk. I need a batch node, connect the images together and then to the IP adapter. This time I'm using the unified loader because I'm lazy with a standard model and connect the pipelines. Now I set the latent batch size to 2 and generate. As you can see, IP adapter applied the images one at a time to each latent. This can be useful to test multiple reference images, but more importantly for animations. I'm not covering animations in this video, otherwise it will become two hours long, but it substantially works as batch unfold of the previous implementation. OK, if you think this is enough new features, well, think again because I kept the best for last. As you know, the Clip Vision encoder works with square pictures. So if I take an IP adapter node and connect it to a tall picture like this, the result will be pretty weird. The model only sees the middle of the image and the top and bottom are cropped. I can take a prep image for clip vision and crop to the top, but now the bottom half of the reference will be completely ignored. In the prep image node, there's a pad option that basically adds bands on the sides, but the result is not generally great. So to fix this, we can use IP adapter tiled node. Let me replace the old one and I'm lowering the weight a little too. Now we can connect the image directly and generate. As you can see now, we have a nice picture that takes all the elements of the reference. For inspection, I've also added a tiles and masks output that we can preview. Here you can see the two tiles and the corresponding masks. The attention mask is created automatically and takes the whole frame, but you can also provide a custom mask. Let me copy the generated image and use it as a reference to draw a mask that takes roughly the center of the picture. Now I can send this to the attention mask input and try again. In the preview, you can see that our mask has been properly cropped and the generated image is more focused on the girl. OK, this pretty much sums up all the new features of IP Adapter V2.
The previous stuff like control net, in painting, attention masking, they all work like before, so I'm not repeating them, but I'll work on extensive documentation in the coming days. Also remember to check the examples in the repository that should cover more or less all the scenarios. Please be aware that if you are working on some mission critical project, I would advise not to update right now because the new version is gonna break all your previous workflows. I'm sorry about that, but it is an update that I had to do and I don't have time to maintain all code. Okay, I think it's all for today. I'm looking forward to seeing what you are going to do with the new IP adapter. Let me know what you think about the new features and that's all for today. See you next time. Ciao. We're just normal men. What do you mean normal men? We're just innocent men. Uh. <laughs>